Today marks the one-year anniversary of Guardian Australia, which of course is the digital offshoot of Britain's long-standing Guardian newspaper here in this country. So for a look at today's papers, we're pleased to be joined from Sydney by the editor-in-chief of Guardian Australia, Catherine Viner. Catherine Viner, good morning. Good morning, Virginia. Nice to have you on board, even while you'll be leaving our shores very shortly because you've been, you've been bumped up the chain to the editor <laughs> of, the, of the Guardian in the States. Yes, I'm sadly leaving at the end of the week, but um, I've had the most amazing time in Australia. It's been absolutely brilliant, and the launch of Guardian Australia has been just the most brilliant professional experience of my life. So I'm leaving with a heavy heart. Well, you, you had ambitions when Guardian Australia kicked off, of course, in terms of the, the numbers that you wanted to achieve. You were not going to put up a paywall that you try and, and, and fund it by the, the clicks that people might make on the advertising. How's that gone? Well, it's gone so much better than we ever expected. I was in this chair a year ago today, and... Um, uh, it was, it's, the readership is so much bigger than we thought. The commercial um, numbers have gone so much better than we thought. We've broken so many stories. Um, I think we're going to talk about them later. Mm. Um, and there seems to be a real um, community building up around Guardian Australia, which really makes us believe that people wanted us here, that there was, there was a gap and that people wanted to read something like Guardian Australia. OK, Catherine, we'll go back to some of those stories, including that yeah. joint investigation with the ABC on Indonesian spying a yeah. bit later on. But let's uh, turn to the stories of the day and let's start with The Guardian. It's got a great story about a potential delay in the uh, New Start arrangements announced in the budget. Well, it it's actually means that the uh, it, it's 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 a story that um, young unemployed people or people under thirty, so not that young, um, could be will be denied a new start any income support whatsoever for six months. We knew that that was out of the budget, but what our reporter Bridie Jabour has discovered is that that could be extended by two months, and so for eight months of the year, young unemployed people could have no income support whatsoever. No money to, uh, to eat, <laughs> to get the bus, to dress. It's, it's very alarming. Um, and um, the idea is, is that the, the extension is about penalties for not turning up to job interviews. But I think it's quite hard to turn up to a job interview if you have no money for bus fare or, or, or just for basic grooming, the sort of thing that gets you a job. So it's very concerning. Let's have a look at page one of The Australian, uh, which of course follows up on the report that was released yesterday by the federal government into that riot on Manus Island that left one person dead. And uh, this is, a, even though the, the, the minister that spoke to this is sort of speaking in terms of it being done and dusted and, and covered now. It's not necessarily going away, is it, Catherine? Well, it's, um, it's a very interesting report um, that vindicates a lot of the reporting Guardian Australia has done, actually. But um, there's lots of detail, um, confirming lots of detail we already knew, for example, about how Reza Barati, the 23-year-old um, asylum seeker, was killed um, and who was involved. But I guess the thing that concerns me about the report is that um, no one is being held responsible. Um, no one's to blame. And I think that's what happens when you put very sensitive things like offshore processing of asylum, uh, uh, if you put processing of asylum seekers offshore, it means they're hundreds of miles away from anyone. All the bits of, different bits of it are privatised by different companies. Um, nobody's quite accountable for anything in particular. So no one really ends up taking responsibility and that's a big concern. And there are still lots of questions unanswered even though uh, this uh, review, Catherine, was quite comprehensive. For instance, no one has been formally charged with Razorbury party's death. That's true, yes. Let's turn now to uh, the Daily Telegraph in Sydney and there's nothing uh, the city of Sydney likes is a, is a great story involving uh, cops, robbers and a certain disgraced detective by the name of Roger Rogerson. Yes, what an extraordinary uh, story and um, completely like the sort of fiction, uh, TV fiction that I saw on TV before I kept moved to Australia. It's um, quite extraordinary. Um, the body um, believed, a body has been discovered um, off the beach in Cronulla, believed to be, although not confirmed yet, to be the body of Jamie Gow, um, the missing student. Um, this guy, uh, McNamara, has been charged with um, his murder and um, Roger Rogerson, who sounds like a sort of horrific character. There's a, there's a quote in one of the papers where he says, uh, oh, disgrace, I should change my middle name to disgraced by deed poll, which um, shows he's rather proud of his notoriety, I fear. But um, he's now being um, searched. He's believed to be in Queensland. Um, it hasn't been discovered yet. But I assume he'll be found very soon. Now, um, as you mentioned earlier, it is the one-year anniversary of Guardian, Guardian Australia. What are the stories that you're particularly proud of in that year, Catherine? 
So I'd say there are three really big stories um, that I'm most proud of. Um, the first was back in September when um, Julia Gillard, who you'll remember, had been silent ever since the spill, ever since she'd been knocked off by Kevin Rudd. She um, wrote a fantastic 5,000-word article for us, which was a really honest, uh, emotional article about um, what losing power feels like. She said it hits you like a fist, it hits you in the guts. Um, and that was um, such a great exclusive to have, um, and it was a really brilliant piece of writing I think. Let's go to that uh, story that uh, really had a tremendous impact here in Australia but also on our relationship with Indonesia and that was the revelation of Australia spying on phone calls of senior personnel in that country. Yes, so this was our story that came through um, the Edward Snowden um, documents, the NSA uh, revelations. Um, and it showed that Australia had been targeting the mobile phone of Yudiono, which is obviously a very uh, controversial thing to do between friendly countries, uh, particularly when the uh, relationship with Indonesia is so important for Australia. It was a massive story um, and it obviously went global and was very big in Indonesia as well, in Australia, as well as in Australia. And of course there was the first footage of the Manus Island unrest that we were speaking about just a moment ago. Yes, that was right. With it, still the only footage of the night, video footage of the night, and it's very sinister footage. It sort of looks like a, a field hospital in a war zone rather than a detention centre for refugees. It's, it's very disturbing footage, um, and I see you've been running it today. Now, I just want to uh, draw your attention. You spoke to um, Umbrella, the website, yesterday, where you had some fairly strong words to say about News Corp, uh, Catherine. You essentially, or you, not essentially, you did accuse News Corp of abusing its position, abusing its power in Australia. What, what makes you do, what, what, what makes you to think? What makes you think papers like the Australian are doing that? I think it's the way the, um, the paper sometimes goes after um, people who um, whose worldview they don't like and I don't mean politicians who put themselves in that position but I mean sort of academics or um, writers um, and and in some cases have destroyed their lives there was a very interesting quarterly essay about it by Robert Mann and that's what I was referring to. Whose lives have been destroyed? Um, I'm talking about people like Larissa Berendt, um, Margaret Simons, I mean obviously not there, uh, they're obviously um, doing very well now but they, um, they had a really tough time and I feel, I feel that was unfair. Catherine Viner, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much. Thank you.